Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kids TV and the motherfucking Hashlight Kitchen Sinks. Let's get this bitch crap today. You heard me? Sorry, I revert back to my old ways from time to time. But as I'm sitting here reflecting, I'm thinking about a penitentiary story I can tell you all. You know, the last few videos, I've kind of been opening up pause, double pause. Matter of fact, triple pause to the to the 10th power. Shouldn't even said that. Shouldn't even use that phrase, opening up. I've been allowing people to uh, learn a little bit about me as far as, you know, some of my personal uh, experiences, some of my, you know, just things that I've gone through in my life. But this afternoon, we're going to get back to the essence and we're going to go back to the penitentiary stories. So for you all that don't know, I am the self-proclaimed Mr. 30 Minutes or Better. Meaning that any video, any story that I bring you is guaranteed to be 30 minutes or better. So if you're on your way to work, you're at work, you don't feel like being there as typically most people don't. Your boss is getting on your nerves. Your co-workers is, they talking your head off or whatever. You're on your way home from work. Let's just say you need to laugh. Perhaps you need to cry. You're trying to lay down and take a nap or at nighttime you're trying to go to sleep depending on whatever time you actually hear this video. Or I'll do you one better. You're just in the mood for a good old fashioned true penitentiary slash life experience story. Whatever the case may be, this is the channel for you. If you like your 10, 12, 13, 15 minute videos, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But perhaps you need to change your uh, ways of thinking. So with all that being said, there is a message. So I'm in a penitentiary. I'm not at a uh, work camp or anything. I'm in the joint. I'm in the John. You know, Urban Dictionary. Uh, uh, John is uh, J-A-W-N, the, the place to be, the dwelling, the uh, establishment. However you want to uh, frame it. And shout out to all the truck drivers, the EMT workers, all the people that's putting in work for us, making sure that we good, we're safe, making sure that the things that we order on Amazon and, and eBay or what have you, they get to us in a uh, timely manner. Shout out to them. Shout out to because their job is, is they put in countless hours. Um, it's a very dangerous job because you're on the roads. You're dealing with idiots driving. Thank you. Salute. Salute. And that's why I make a lot of these videos 30 minutes or longer because consistently they get at me in my comments and they say, Ken, you just don't understand. I put on a few of your videos and next thing I know, my shift is over with. Or I'm halfway through my shift or I've, you know, I've, I've done the back end of my shift again, pause, double pause. It, it probably deserved the double pause. So I'm in the penitentiary and in the penitentiary, you see all types of things that go down, you know, and it's people say, uh, why do prison content creators, if you will, talk about booty bandits? Talk about transgenders. Talk about, you know, the things that go on in prison that I don't necessarily want to say that don't go on out here because they do. It's just that in prison, things are more, um, how can you put this? Things are more tolerable, more accepted. And so that's just a part of the prison. You know, that's just what goes on in prison. So there's no sense in talking about everything else, but leave this part out. No, you need to talk about everything. This is just, in my humble opinion, this is just what I prefer to do. Now, before I go on on a, on a side note, on a side note, there's no rush. There's no rush. So I can throw in a couple side notes. Shout out to the boy Jay Williams. Shout out to the boy Jay Williams. I, I seen his, um, his Jay Williams update video. If you're not familiar and you're hiding under a rock or living under a rock, Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, in my opinion, the coldest prison content creator that there is, probably the coldest YouTuber that there is uh, overall, just happens to do prison stories. But Jay Williams got to talking about how, you know, things were going for him as far as why we haven't heard from him. Now, I've talked to him. I've communicated with him, but the average, you know, outside of his immediate circle, and I'm not in his immediate circle. Don't get it twisted. I'm not proclaiming to be 
in his immediate circle. But I have had communication with him several times, you know, since he's been locked up. He was just talking about, you know, all the different things, the the nuances, the, you know, the, the broken promises. You know, he was supposed to have work release. He was supposed to, you know, do this and do that. And it, it, it didn't quite go that way. That's just part of life. You see, things rarely go as planned. You know, we can plan. They say there's an old joke. They say you want to make uh, God smile telling your plans. Things really go as planned. And he talked about, you know, he's finally at a place to where this is the place that he's going to actually serve his time out from. Now, I don't want to give his release date because he said that he wants to wants it to be a surprise. So I'm going to just tell you it's within the next couple months. Jay Williams will be home back telling the hottest stories on YouTube. Oh, well, come on, Ken's man. He's asking for money, man. He's, he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's trying to con the people. I don't see him conning anybody. I see him telling you all exactly what's going on. You wanted to hear from him, right? He's telling you all exactly what's going on. He's telling you exactly, you know, what his scenario, what his situation is. And that's what it is. Nobody makes you go in your wallet and pull your card out pull your cash out and send money nobody makes you do that so therefore it can't be a situation where he's conning anyone but nevertheless i just wanted to throw that in because somebody did um you know jump in my comments and they say kens you know did you hear about the jay williams update which i hadn't and i went back and i looked and i watched it so again shout out to the boy jay williams go to his channel um if you can help him out help him out in any sort of way you know, do what you can do. But getting back on track, getting back on track to what my message is today. I'm in the John. I almost forgot I had a thing. I'm in the John. I'm in the penitentiary. As I mentioned, things in the joint is just, it's accepted. Even if people don't necessarily agree or like it, it's accepted. Especially when it comes to the, uh, the gay activity. That goes on in prison. Does everybody partake in it? Absolutely not. Fleece Johnson said that 90% of the people that's locked up partake in it. No. No. It, it, this is my opinion. Now, when he was locked up during the 70s, 80s, 90s, I still don't think it was that way. And, it, and I say this respectfully. I'm just uh, giving my opinion. You got a lot of people that don't participate in that sort of activity. But there are some, a minority that do and the ones that do the ones that do partake in that uh uh sort of activity if you will they're not just all out in the open you know they're in the closet with it you got two individuals you got an individual named kite pretty sure you can self-explanatory you can use uh uh you'll know why his name is kite for the simple fact of his name is Kite. <laughs> he loved to stay high. So they, you know, they deemed him as Kite. See, in prison, penitentiary, they'll give you any sort of nickname. Sometimes they'll use your street name. Sometimes they'll use your nickname, you know, that they that they give you while in prison. Just depends on who you are and what your stature is. You got an individual that's a transgender named Chocolate. Now, hold on, kids. You already told us about the story about chocolate. No, no, no. Simmer down. Relax. Let me, let me, let me explain to you. You had an individual named Chocolate that was a, uh, a, a booty bandit. Totally different experience. Totally different uh, uh, bit that I did my time on. Then you got an individual named Chocolate who's a transgender. We're on the prison yard. In prison, transgenders... And not just transgenders, just anybody that's of that uh, uh, community, you know. But transgenders are really, really sought after. Again, not by everybody. I want to stress that. Everybody is not on that. Not to say there's anything wrong with people that decide to be transgender or that's your lifestyle. I'm not saying anything about that. What I'm saying is in prison... To where you're in a prison where you got 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 people. There's going to be a, a, a 
a large there's going to be a large section there's going to be a, a a lot of people that's interested in the transgender now chocolate you know was chocolate probably about five nine slender bill he was about i don't know 160 165 had the little locks the little dreads or what have you um I mean, it's pretty much it that I can give, you know, description wise. Highly sought after on the yard. According to other inmates that that liked this sort of uh, 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 action. He was thanked. Again, according to them, not according to me, according to them. A lot of dudes wanted chocolate. Chocolate just wasn't a, 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 I don't necessarily want to say your average transgender. Chocolate had cloud on the yard. Being so sought after, he had options. Chocolate liked the white boys. Chocolate liked the white boys for the simple fact that the white boys had all the bread. Not to say that black dudes don't got bread in prison. But the white dudes, man, they got that bread. And they're going to pay. They're going to pay the way that they weigh. And they're not really trying to be, you know, uh, uh, secretive about the situation. Yeah, by God, I like me a little black. You know, I like me a little, you know, they, they, <laughs> I like my coffee uh, black, by God. They're going to come all the way out and, and, and just talk about it. There is no, oh, look, man, we got to sneak here and sneak there and, and don't tell nobody. No. So chocolate tended to, you know, veer towards the uh, the white dudes. All the white dudes wanted chocolate. All the white dudes that was in that sort of lifestyle wanted chocolate. Yeah, several black dudes that wanted chocolate. Again, black dudes that was in that lifestyle. I'm being very specific and being very careful because I don't want anybody jumping in the comments. Oh, come on, Kins, man. Everybody ain't on that, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody... I understand everybody's not on it. And that's the reason. This is the reason that I'm being very careful with my words. Y'all rock with me, man. You rocking with me, man. Jump in the comments, man, to help the engagement, to help, you know, get my videos and my views up. Rock with me. Let me know you rocking with me, man. Where you rocking with me from? You know, you got Memphis, you got San Antonio, you got Arkansas, you got Florida, parts of all types of Florida, you got Kentucky, you got Louisville, you got Lexington. Let me know where you're chiming in from. Think about chocolate. Chocolate was a different type of uh, uh, transgender. You know, was 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 very laid back, very subtle, but wasn't intimidated. See, there was a reputation on the yard that Chocolate had hands. Chocolate knew how to use his hands and would fight at the drop of a dime. Now, although at this point, I hadn't seen anything to uh, uh, back this uh, theory up, if you will. That was the word on the yard. Chocolate's getting all type of commissary, all type of money orders, all type of money sent in on his books or whatever, because, you know... The white dudes is making sure that he's good. Wasn't tied down, wasn't pent down to anybody. Chocolate did what he wanted to do. Kite was really, really feeling chocolate. Kite would say little things because they worked together at, you know, at one point. Because in prison, you have to have a job. So they worked together in the kitchen at one point. And so, you know, in the kitchen, like, you might have to be at work. If you work the AM shift, you might have to be at work. Like, if you've never been to prison, they serve breakfast at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning. So you may have to get up and be at work at 3.15, 3.30 in the morning to start preparing the food, get the, you know, food ready so that when, the you know, everybody comes through for their, their trays or what have you, everything's prepared. They worked in the kitchen together. So they somewhat got acquainted, if you will, and, you know, Kite shot his shot. He would consistently shoot his shot at Chocolate. 
while chocolate may have been obliged, may not have been obliged, I don't really know. Chocolate was not going to mess up what he had going on with the white dudes that was that was kicking that, bro, you know, that kicking that bread to mess with somebody that's relying on state pay, which is the amount that the state pays you every month for working, you know, in the kitchen or doing landscaping or, you know, weed eating, cutting grass, shoveling snow, whatever. Twenty five, thirty, forty dollars a month and forty dollars a month is very, very high. Probably, probably closer to 25 to 30 bucks a month. Now, Kai got money sent in from time to time, but his money was nowhere near as long nor consistent as the white boys. See, the white boys, they had the, they had the, uh, they had the strips. Everybody wanted the strips. They had the greenery. And they people sent them money. So they was strapped. You know what I mean? They was good. Chocolate wasn't a rude individual, you know. If you needed something, if you, you know, he, he'd talk to you, he'll, he'll, you know, if you need something, he'll holler at you. And so, as time went on, Kite became, um, I don't necessarily want to say infuriated, Kite became a little, a little distraught. You know, he, he wasn't, he wasn't really feeling the fact that chocolate wasn't filling him every morning he's shooting his shot and he's you know he feel like chocolate is playing with him but from what i understand i'm a narrator i wasn't there every day i wasn't you know a part of all their uh you know conversations that they had so from what i understand kite would get more and more upset because he wanted chocolate but chocolate wouldn't give in to his advances so come to find out, I don't necessarily want to label uh, uh, Kite as a booty bandit, but he was a cheek buster. He liked busting them cheeks as Big Hurt, as Big Hurt from Fresh Out uh, Prison Series would say. He was a cheek buster. And if you're a cheek buster, kudos to you. I'm not knocking anybody. If that's what you choose to do, I'm not a cheek buster. But if that's what you so uh, uh, desire to do, that's on you. There's nothing wrong with, with how you feel as far as what you want to do. I think it's technically we're all cheek busters when you really, really think about it. But I don't bust dudes' cheeks, respectfully. But at any rate, he's not really feeling the fact that chocolate is, is not feeling him. One day we're in the kitchen. We're in the chow hall. When the chow hall... Kite is still working, you know, on the child line. Now, typically, all the ballers, if you got money in prison or you got money on a regular, a lot of dudes, especially the ballers, they don't even go to the child hall. They may go to the child hall to handle some business. They may go to the child hall if it's a decent tray like burgers or, or you know, polar sausages or paws, though. Um, taco salads, tacos, whatever. They may go and give their trays away to somebody else, you know, one of their homeboys or something like that. But it's kind of like an embarrassment. It's crazy, but it's kind of like an embarrassment for somebody that has money that eats out of their locker, which means everything they eat is bought off a commissary or order, you know, when the when the prison does uh when the prison does uh uh like pizzas and steaks and things of that nature. It's an embarrassment. So even if they want to eat in the chow hall that day, they can't be seen eating in the chow hall. You see what I'm saying? They're in a child hall this particular day. Chocolate comes through the line. Chocolate won't set. Chocolate won't set chicken. They having chicken. It's chicken day. One of the biggest days in prison. Hey, if you've been to prison or if you've been to jail, you know anything about chicken day? Jump in the comments and let and let the people know how it is on chicken day. See, on chicken day, the whole not a, not necessarily the whole yard, but the majority of the yard is showing up for that child, for that chicken. Just what it was. They got a, uh, <laughs> they got kite on, you know, working the chicken. Everybody comes through, you know what I'm saying? If it's a small piece of chicken, nah, come on, bro. Nah, man, give me a bigger piece of chicken, man. Come on, man. And you got the little Aramark workers, Kelwell, whatever company that your prison 
deals with this particular uh, particular situation. It was Airmark. You literally have the Airmark workers trying to tell the uh, the inmates, dudes doing life sentences, dudes doing 30, 40 years, 20 years, 15 years, to watch the portions that they hand out to the inmates. You're not supposed to cherry pick anything. Give them a piece of chicken, move on. Now you got the dudes that's coming through that's respected, the gorillas or whatever. Now, nah, bro, give me a bigger piece of chicken. Yeah, 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 that one right there. So Kite, you know, he's cherry picking. He ain't really listening to the people from everybody. What y'all gonna do? Huh? What you gonna do? Chocolate comes through. Gives chocolate a piece of chicken. Smallest, probably the smallest piece of chicken in the batch. I don't know if it was hand-picked. I don't know if it was something that he seen chocolate in the line and he set it to the side. I don't know. That's just what it was. Chocolate comes through, as I mentioned. Kite gives him the uh, smallest piece of chicken. Come on, bro. This is half the, the size of, you know what I'm saying, everybody else's uh, 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 piece of chicken, if you will. <laughs> you give me a bigger piece than that? Come on, bro. You holding up the line, man. Keep it moving. For real? I didn't just seen you... I done just watched you give other people larger pieces of chicken, man. You gon' you know what I mean? Give me a bigger piece of chicken, please. I'm asking you nicely, please. At this point, chocolate didn't work in the kitchen any longer. The kitchen is just work one of those jobs where when you first go to prison, you go, you start out in the kitchen eight times out of ten, then you graduate and go somewhere else or whatever. Or if you don't have any money coming in, you go to the kitchen because you still in food and you negotiating and you, you know, you you hustling out of the kitchen. Bro, I already told you, man. Keep it moving, man. You keep holding the line up. Oh, so you just gonna do me like that? You think I'm you think I'm P? You think I'm P when I say P is is I can't say it on YouTube. I don't wanna get my, my channel struck, but you all know what I mean. Oh, you think I'm a P? You think I'm a P? Hey man, I already told you, man. Keep the line moving. Okay, okay. <laughs> Spits in his face. Right there on the child line in front of everybody. So all the workers, there's several workers on the child line in prison. It's working each, you know, you got the mashed potatoes, you got the chicken, you got the green beans, you got the person who puts the cookie on the tray, the applesauce, the, the you know, potato salad, whatever that they serve in that day. You got several workers back there. They come in changing out the pans. Okay, we need more chicken. We need more mashed potatoes. Okay, I got you, boss. Come through, take the old tray out, put the new tray in. So there's several, several workers. It's an assembly line, if you will. Spits right in his face. Now, you can't just jump right over the, the counter. You know, you see what I'm saying? Are you going to spit in my face? So he's walking around to try to, you know, come get that chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah, come on over. Come on over. He sees the CEOs or whatever. He backs up. I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. This is what Kite is saying to chocolate. Everybody's laughing. They clowning him. They are clowning him. Now, it's not necessarily something that I feel as though you can clown people over, but I have a little bit more sentiment in my heart. Like, if I see somebody, I seen somebody yesterday that was trying to do tricks on his bike, and hey, he seen a little female, he was trying to show off, and he ended up falling off his bike. A lot of people would be cracking up laughing. Ah, ah, I, fell off. I don't laugh at stuff like that because he could have been seriously hurt. And so the fact that chocolate spit in Kite's face wasn't really impressive to me okay nobody knows that they're about to be spat on he was coming around to do something he seen the ceos he knew that that wasn't really the time and place i'm gonna get you though i'm definitely gonna get you so words you know traveling in the yard chocolate spitting kite's face man kite wasn't no slouch you know just because he was a cheek buster man kite wasn't no slouch he was probably he had to weigh, let me see, let me reflect back. A good 225, 220, 225, 230, somewhere right around in that range. It's athletic. Has some big old legs, man. Pause. I just know because, like, we used to hoop. Like, he could hoop. And he was just so strong. Like, I'd be trying to guard him in the post, and dude was just so strong. It's probably, you know, it wasn't really that tall. Probably, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the, his exact height. Uh, Y'all jump in the comments and tell me what you feel as though I'm going to say as far as his height was, is, I'll say about 5'11", roughly 5'11". 
about my complexion, short haircut, man. And I'm trying to paint a picture for you all. Dude was a stocky built dude. You know, he didn't really lift weights. Matter of fact, he didn't lift weights at all. He was just, he was just a big dude. He was a strong dude, you know, just natural. He's in a situation now because he feels as though, how can I win? If I go beat up chocolate, how am I really, really going to win under these circumstances, under these conditions? Nah, you spit in my face. I, I can't let that ride. I cannot let that ride. Never really could catch chocolate in a, in a scenario to where he could get to him. Chocolate got them white boys around him. White boys, they got knives in prison. I'd say black dudes don't, but them white boys, they got them knives. They got that money. So they making sure that chocolate is well protected. In the child hall again one day. See, I went to the child hall. I got money sent to me, but I wasn't balling in prison. But I went to the child hall. I did. I feel like y'all owe me. So I'm going to go get it. Even if I don't eat it, I'm going to give it to somebody. I was in that child hall. Went to the child hall one day. It's just one of the days to where kite is off, off of work. Sometimes people work seven days a week. Sometimes people work six, five. Kite's off work that day. Chocolate comes in the child. Must have been some, you know, chicken patties or something like that that day. Like I said, man, certain days, you know, like when they have chicken patties, you catch somebody that's in the child hall. Hey, bro, uh, man, let me get 10 of them chicken patties. What you charge me? Hey, man, give me $5. Commissary, whatever. All right, bet. You know, all type of deals and negotiation. People stealing food out of the back all the time, man. Got the hustle. Got to eat in prison. That's just what it is. Hell, you even got guards and, and air mark workers stealing uh, food out of the kitchen, taking it home, putting it in their trunks. And they feeding us the garbage, and they taking the chicken patties, the burgers, the, the chicken strips, and the pizzas. And they taking that home and feeding us the beans and the, you know, the, the garbage. comes in the child hall when he comes in the child hall kites are already you know in line so it's probably about 10 people you know between them chocolate walks right up to uh to kite bam socks i'm talking about socksy not like ah, ah, ah. no socksy i'm talking about from the from the shoulder boom Steals, hits him, clock that boy in his eye. Now he can't really see. I'm talking about hit him in his. He didn't even see. Blindsided, hits him in his eye. He's trying to gain his composure. He's trying to, but he can't really see, and he's kind of dazed. Chocolate's welling on him. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, just welling on him. Everybody's laughing. I'm talking about everybody in the chow hall is laughing because you have this individual that's getting whooped by the transgender. And the transgender is nearly 100 pounds. Well, not 100 pounds, but way, way uh, uh, smaller. 60, 70 pounds smaller than Kite. They laugh. Police come. They break it up. They take them to the hole. That's the story of the day. That's the laugh of the day. Everybody is cracking up laughing. Chocolate's talking big, big stuff. I'm still a man. You act like I ain't got no hands. Yeah, don't let this fool you. Don't let this fool you. And I'm going to whoop you again. And I'm going to do this again. Dude's lumped up. Uh, Willie Lump Lump. Don't go out like Willie Lump Lump. Kite's looking like Willie Lump Lump. Man. He's lumped up. Eyes messed up, mouth is bleeding, he's bruised up or whatever. He's about my complexion, maybe a little bit darker than me. They go to the hole. As I mentioned, that's the talk of the yard. Everybody's talking about that. See, the problem is in prison or, or I'm going to just keep it in prison. When you fight an individual such as uh, Chocolate, you really want to try to avoid any sort of confrontation because you can't win. Because if you do win, guess what? That ain't nothing you were supposed to win. Matter of fact, you a bully. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even have fought that individual. But oh, if you lose. If you lose. <laughs> you would never live that down. 
I mean, I'm talking about you're probably going to end up having to check off the yard because you're going to fight so many other indiv individuals because they was laughing at you because you just got beat by an individual such as chocolate. They go to the hole in prison in Kentucky fighting is 15 days. If it wasn't anything violent, nobody got, you know, they ain't pushed that blade on nobody. Nobody got, you know, severely uh, injured or anything like that. Come back out. You sign a no conflict order, whatever. I don't have no conflict with him. I don't have no conflict with him. They let you all back back out on the yard. If you even do 15 days, the hole, depending on how, uh, how full the hole is, you may only do a week, three or four days, 10 days, 11 days, whatever the case may be, the most time you're going to do is 15 days. They get out of the hole. Kite got revenge on his mind. As I mentioned, everybody's clowning him. He has to get back. He's like, nah, I'm not letting this ride. This is not gonna ride. He snuck me. Did he get snuck? Absolutely, he got snuck. He didn't even know that chocolate was in there, so chocolate came up and, you know, snuck him. Hit him in his eye, as I mentioned. He's looking for the right opportunity to get him. As I've mentioned a couple times, chocolate is, you know, it's not your average uh, laid back. Uh, chocolate's with the with the action, with the business. What's good? Yeah, I'm just this way. I can't help that I'm just I'm this way, but I'm with the business. We can get down. Yeah, we can get down. Chocolate's not backing down by any stretch of the imagination. Now Chocolate's, you know, spilling the beans. He's just mad because he was shooting at me, and I didn't want him. I told him that he was a nice dude or what have you, but he, you know, I'm, I'm already dealing with somebody else over here, and he just really wasn't my type. So he's spilling the beans. That's why I said I don't necessarily want to call him a booty bandit, but he was a cheek buster. We out on the yard, the weight pile one day. That's when it all hit the fan. Kite sees his opportunity to seize the moment. He, 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 he sees that, okay, chocolate's over there sitting on the picnic table because they got like picnic tables on the, on the yard and he's by himself. He walks over. He don't really say nothing. You know, a couple people that he's with or whatever. Hey, hold on y'all. They're on the weight pile. They, cause the weight pile's outside. It's like a little shed and they got like all the weights inside. Back then they had free weights. They've taken all the free weights out of a lot of the prisons in Kentucky, a couple of the camps still have free, free weights. But at this particular time, everybody had free weights. Monsters in there. I'm talking about dudes taking 225, man, doing military presses behind the neck just easily. Like easily. Like you just see some real, real monsters in the prison weight pad. He walks up to Chocolate. He walks up to Chocolate. Chocolate jumps up. He sees him coming, obviously. So now they square up. Square up. They square up. Square up. Chocolate squares up. You see what I'm saying? But dude, Kite is like, Kite can really, he knows how to use his hands. He knows how to fight. Boom. Slaps Chocolate. I guess that's the humiliation for spitting in his face. He didn't want to just punch him. He slap. Boom. Slaps Immediately, everybody sees it. Everybody starts to kind of run towards, gravitate towards the situation, even though you typically don't want to do that in prison because it attracts attention from the cameras and the COs. But this was right down the middle of the yard. You got guard towers that have guns. You have guards, you know, COs that's walking the yard. Everybody's going to see it. This wasn't a huge yard. Certain yards, you can get away with that. This particular yard wasn't that big of a yard. It's a nice size yard, but it wasn't huge like Green River or anything like that. Y'all ever been to Lee, uh, Lee Adjustment Center? You know what I'm speaking of. This wasn't a huge yard. Slaps him. Chocolate, okay. Okay, what's up? Chocolate didn't have nothing coming, though. This dude was a man. This dude was a, a, a beast. Not to say Chocolate wasn't a man. I'm just saying this dude was a good with his hands. Hits him a couple times. Wham, wham. Chocolate swings. Don't have nothing. Boom. Sleeps Chocolate. Chocolate's always sleep. I mean, goes to sleep. Now, when he goes to sleep, now, all this is happening, like, fast. So, when I'm telling the story, it's happening way faster than this. Knocked out. Like this. Hands stiff. 
shaking a little bit. You know, bobblehead dog shaking. Kite goes over to stomp him. Kite's gonna stomp him all the way out. The only problem is the white dudes that's you know in in the the circle of uh, chocolate. They see it. They run over. They jump in. So now it's like five of them jumping kite. Kite's holding his own, but you know it's kind of hard to fight five dudes. Now kites people they see what's going on. They run over. They fighting. So now it's an all out damn near race war. Even though it wasn't about race, but you got the white dudes and they fighting the black dudes. I don't know exactly how many people it was. It was probably, it was close to even seven, eight uh, black dudes, seven, eight white dudes, give or take one or two. But, you know, it was it was pretty much even. This time, man, Chocolate done kind of woke up. He don't really know what's going on. You, you know, he's dazed. But he done woke up. It's a big fight on the yard. The COs then came out. They breaking it up. They got they 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 tear gas on them, or not the tear gas, but a, what do you call it? A, a pepper spray or whatever. So they done came out. They spraying everybody. It's not like on TV to where in the guards tower they firing at everybody or firing warning shots. It wasn't anything like that. Now they will do that. Don't get it twisted. But this wasn't one of those situations that called for that. They finally get the yard calmed down. They take, you know, everybody that's involved to the hole. A couple people actually able to kind of slide off or whatever. Not get taken to the hole. And in a sense, I guess Kite kind of got his get back. But that never really overshadowed the fact that not only did, not only did chocolate spit in your face, he beat you up the first time. See, nobody's really looking at, oh, well, yeah, he beat him up, but he snuck him from behind. No. You got whooped by a transgender. People fail to realize sometimes just because you may be a transgender, you are still physically a man. You physically, you know, have strength. You, you know how to, some of them really know how to really use their hands and fight. So that's why it's best to just try to, as I mentioned earlier, try to even avoid that whole conflict. Because either way it goes, you can't win. If you win, you were supposed to win. But if you lose, if you lose, man, you're going to get clamped. Kite was so upset about that scenario. Now, at this particular time, once they went to the hole, wasn't no putting everybody back out on the yard. You know? You're going to get sent to this institution. You're going to get sent to that institution. Because obviously there's something going on between you two. I don't know if it's a lover's quarrel. I don't know exactly what it is. And then you couldn't put a uh, kite back out on the yard. Because guess what? Now the white boys is mad because chocolate has been shipped off to another institution. See, chocolate's going to be good wherever he goes. Because he's a cot commodity. He's always going to have a commissary. He's always going to be able to make phone calls. He's always going to have money. He's always going to have companionship wherever he goes. Word got back that Kite, man, it wasn't over with. If Kite got back out, he was going to stomp him again. And if I see you on the streets, because they weren't from the same city, but they, were, they weren't that far apart as far as, you know. See, in the state, it's different from the feds because the feds, you might have, it's, it's like your car, the people that you ride with is regions. So being from Kentucky, it might not be that many people from Kentucky. So I got to ride with the surrounding states, Indiana, you know, your Tennessees, your you know, your Ohio's, the people that's in that immediate region. But in the state, it's going to be a whole lot of people from your city or the next city over or a couple cities, counties over. But everything's going to be, you know, within that, you know, Kentucky. He's looking, Kite wasn't no joke on the street with them hammers, with them things. He's looking to uh, do some serious damage. Unalive, he's looking to unalive chocolate if he sees chocolate on them streets he was serious about that been in all types shootouts or what he was in there over a couple gun cases he wasn't no punk by no stretch of the imagination these are the crazy things that you see in prison these are the crazy things that go on in prison on a daily basis so that's why it always it, it really makes me laugh when i hear people say now come on kins i rock with you but I just heard, you know, this uh, content creator tell a, a similar story. Are you taking this story, Kins? Are you? You can't reinvent the wheel. There's only so many things that can happen in prison, no, despite where you're at. 
So you'll probably hear several different stories that are similar to another individual stories. Because this prison is only so much that can happen. Crazy, man. Now this is something that I witnessed. I was there. I seen it. I was a I was a part of it as far as being, you know, in the environment. That's what I mean when I say I was a part of it. But certain stories I wasn't there and I get the information from people that were there or people that were involved and I narrate the story. Think about it. Everybody that tells these stories, there's no possible way that they were there at every single event, every single uh, fight, every single, you know, mayhem or, or misunderstanding or whatever you want to label it as. Out of all the stories that they tell, there's just no possible way, especially when you're telling stories on a daily basis, sometimes two, three times a day. Now, come on, man. It's not that many stories in the world. In the world. Let's keep it real, man. I'm going to keep it real with you. But I never make up a story. For what? I do wonder. I do wonder. Now, I, I did see. I seen. Um, I seen Kite on Facebook. And, you know, we interacted or whatever as far as messaged each other a couple times. But we never, I never really got around to asking him because, you know, I try to mind my business. I, you know, I was pretty much going to wait for him to bring it up. He seemed like he's doing very well in life uh, as far as, you know, I don't know exactly what he's doing, but he's some money coming somewhere. Maybe it's falling out of the sky. I don't know. Perhaps he's let that go. I don't really know the scenario, but I do wonder. And I was wondering when I spoke with him, whatever happened with that situation. Did you ever see him on the street? Nine times out of ten, you probably didn't even see him. And if you did, man, that was years ago. You know what, man? Whatever, man. You know not to come over this way. You know what's going to happen if you run over here, man. You know what I mean? Hopefully you all like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chisana if you're not already subscribed. Be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive it's been brought to my attention. People are not getting my post notifications. I just check the channel every day. Every day I'm dropping some, some heat, some action. If I miss a day, the next day I'm coming back with it. I haven't really been doing my intros as of late because my phone has been acting crazy and my editing software is, is just a big... I'm going to get it together for you all. And, and the intros are... I'm going to get them back going really really soon but i think i have to just get a larger memory card because i don't really have the storage and the space to do exactly what i want to do but best believe i'm aware of the situation and we're gonna get it together for you man real kens tv i holla